Hey guys, it's Saikuru Sam here with no sunglasses. I know, I didn't actually cut my hair. It's still extremely long and you'll realize that it's probably a little bit wet still because if not, it just freaks out. <laughs> That's the best way I can put it. So just understand, please. Anyway, so in this video, we're gonna take a look at how we can achieve realistic shadows in Unity using the high definition render pipeline. As you know, lately I've been making more of the level design videos, which I'm super happy about, by the way. And let me know in the comments if you guys wanna keep seeing more of them. And a lot of people were asking me how I achieved the shadows in those. So I decided that I would be a good idea to make a video. Hopefully it is. I'm not saying it is, I'm just saying it should be. So we're gonna get started in just a moment, but first, this video is sponsored by Red Zone Studios. Unwalkable is a game being made by a single game developer, Jeff King from Red Zone Studios using Unity. His goal is to create a fun and wacky game in which you can solve puzzles using anything you can find in the environment around you. And the game utilizes physics for character animations as well as most in-game items you interact with. This game is still under development, but it is coming up on Steam, so please wishlist this game on Steam and leave a comment in the forums. So make sure to go to the link in the description after watching this video to see his game on Steam. Now with that being said, let's jump into Unity. All right, so here we are in Unity 2019.3. I know people have been commenting that I should move on to Unity 2020, but don't don't judge me. I want to be stuck in the past. And I mean, come on, like, yes, I am stuck in 2019, but look what happened as soon as we entered 2020. <laughs> anyway, so enough of the drama. Basically, we're running Unity 2019.3 with the High Definition Render Pipeline, or HDRP for short. And if you want to see a detailed guide on how you can get started with HDRP, feel free to check out the video that's linked in the description. But I will be assuming that, I mean, this video is going to be beginner friendly, but if you are intermediate as well, that's no problem. I'm just gonna take maybe two extra minutes out of your life. I'm sorry. <laughs> I like apologizing. So what I have here is a demo made by Unity called Fontainebleau. Um, maybe I am butchering the name. I'm sorry, French people. I apologize. But if you guys wanna use the same demo as I do, feel free to check out the link in the description. But really the techniques that we're gonna cover in this video are not related to the demo specifically. It's literally just getting realistic shadows in HDRP. All right, so in my scene, as you can see, I have it highlighted because I didn't wanna forget what I was gonna cover first and foremost. We have a directional light in the scene. Now this one is a real-time light, so as we change it, it doesn't need to be baked or anything. It just changes automatically but as you can see we don't have any shadows in the scene so it just looks a little weird right now and as I promised because I'm a very responsible youtuber if you are new and you don't know how to get a directional light into your scene you just go to game object light and then you pick the directional light in the built-in render pipeline if you guys have been using unity for a while you'll remember that in the built-in render pipeline it was kind of just a little toggle for shadows Whereas now you have a bit more organized structure in the inspector window. So at the bottom, you will see that we have a field called shadows. So let's go ahead and untoggle that. Untoggle? Unfold, I think is the right word. So the first time I saw this field, it did confuse me just a little bit, but basically the way it works is that you first and foremost enable shadow of map, which now it looks better than before. And then you can set a update mode as in terms of how frequently you want this to update. So if you change, I mean, if you have it on every frame and you change your lighting's direction, it's gonna update real time. Whereas if you set this to be like on enable or on demand and then change the rotation of your light, it's not gonna change, but it's just gonna change once you play the game. And then we have the resolution, which I normally set to high. I don't know why I actually don't set it to ultra ever, like ever, ever, but I kind of like the quality that we get through high. So I'm just gonna leave it there. And then importantly, we also have contact shadows. Now contact, oops. <laughs> and importantly, we also have contact shadows and there we go, we're going out of the inspector. Good job. Sam, very professional tutorial. So contact shadows are usually used to improve the, well, contact between a shadow and its object. So if we turn this on, you can see the shadows on the grass hitting the ground and the, um, I think it's a trunk. Is there a trunk or is there a rock? Oh, it's actually a rock. Oh, and it's a trunk too. So here you go. <laughs> see, I'm not a liar. So basically if I disable this again, you will see that the shadows just kind of disappear and the contact shadows aren't just on the ground. I mean, I was focusing on the ground, but you can also see like the trunk hitting this part 
So if I just disable this, boom, it's gone. And then you enable it and it's back there. Now where it says custom, I actually had no clue what this was gonna do until I clicked it, but it's apparently just a quality field or a quality preset field. So we can just go ahead and set this to high just in case. Great, so that was the basics of adding the shadows into your scene. Now, the thing is, they don't look extremely realistic. As you can see, I mean, if I just move the light a little bit or rather rotate it, you can see that it just kind of blurs out the um, the leaves from the trees, which it doesn't really look that realistic. I mean, it's better from the old version where we had no shadows, but we can definitely do something better. So let me show you guys. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna go to my sky and fog volume game object. And if you don't know what this is, by the way, you can also check out my other video, which is also gonna be linked in the description where I talk more about the volume framework in Unity. But essentially the volume framework, I mean, I can give you like a TLDR, uh, too long, didn't read. It's the new way of controlling the environment settings and the visuals of the environment in Unity with HDRP. And this is actually what really differs HDRP from the built-in render pipeline, because now you actually have fuller control over the environment settings, whereas before you just kind of had to rely on a few basic settings and it just built on top of it. And that's the main point with the scriptable render pipelines anyway. So what we're gonna do in here is we're gonna click on add override. And a override is essentially an effect within this volume. So because now with the volume framework, we we have full control over the environment settings, we can actually go to shadowing and add all three of these effects, including the contact shadows, micro shadows, and shadows. A lot of shadows, I know. <laughs> so what I'm gonna do first is I'll just add shadows first. And then in here, I'm gonna click on all to enable all of the settings. And you can see that as soon as I disable this, it returns to being really blurry. I mean, not really blurry, but you know, it's a little bit more blurry. And then if I enable this effect, it just becomes a little more sharp in between the shadows. And if we rotate the light, you can see this effect more clearly. So first and foremost, we have the field max distance, which is usually by default set to 500. And this is in uh, meters, which is, I, I just literally learned this now by accidentally hovering my mouse over this, but apparently it is, so maybe worth mentioning. But what we're gonna do here is I normally change this value to 300 instead of 500. And there's a couple of reasons for that. Reason number one, is because 300, basically the, the shorter the distance for your shadows are, the max distance, the more sharp it is going to be in the near plane. So what I mean is if I just undo and redo, as you can see, I return to 500, it becomes a little bit more blurry. Now, if I go back to 300, which is the new value, you can see that it becomes more sharp now. So 500, 300, 500, 300. I know I'm very professional. So that was reason number one. Reason number two is because usually you don't really need to render that many shadows as far out as 500 meters, which I don't really, you know, unless you're making like a big landscape where the, the maybe the player stands on top of a mountain or like a cliff and they're looking down on like a city or whatever, then maybe you may have a you know longer distance because you don't really have to care about the short distance shadows then. But for a forest scene like this where the longer distance is pretty much blocked out by trees and grass and foliage anyway, I don't really need 500 as a distance. So I'd rather put the focus on the shadows that are near to my camera. So I'm gonna go ahead and fold up the shadows override, but next up, we're gonna add one more. And this time, let's go with I don't know, maybe contact shadows? Honestly, don't ask me about prioritization. <laughs> so we're just gonna go ahead and enable this. And the reason we are adding the contact shadows override, even though, I mean, if we disable this, there are still contact shadows, like you can see on the grass here, or not grass, leaves or foliage. But when we enable this, you can see that there are just a few more details, like I can, you know, disable, re-enable, and there are just more details that are visible to the eye now. But what you might be interested in here is the length factor because if you make this shorter, the shadows are actually gonna be more visible to the object specifically, but you don't actually have to make it too short either. And this is actually one of the reasons why I wanted to show you this override specifically, because this is something that I use in my level designs as well. And I know a lot of people were commenting like, oh, how did you make the shadows look so good? Or how did you make them look so sharp? And this is, the, this is one of those factors, right? I just changed the length 
And um, I also changed the distance scale factor. So as you can see farther back in the scene, like here, that's just changing a little bit. Most importantly though, I do play with the quality, which is by default set to medium. So let's go ahead and change this to high. And that's pretty much it for contact shadows. So let's go ahead and add the last one. I can't speak. Let's go ahead and add the last one, the micro shadows. And you can immediately see the effect. It just makes it darker on the mud and the dirt road here. Um, it makes it darker and more obvious that there are shadows between these like little, you know, sticks and stones in the ground. And we, if we disable this, you can see the effect really shine. I mean, it's almost as if it just increases the contrast a little bit around the shadows of the objects. So like for instance, when I enable this, you can see that the tree doesn't really, you know, change any colors or contrast but the ground really gets a big difference. And I feel like that's the beauty of it. And you know, we can also go to like a specific object like these rocks here, and you can see the grass, the foliage right here, get a big effect from this as well. And also the opacity of the shadows increase a little bit too, like, you know, farther back into the scene here. If I enable this, you can see that the shadows of the trees here are way more clear now, whereas before it just had a lower opacity. And speaking of the opacity, you can also change that. So if you feel like that's too much, you can change the opacity of the overall shadows as well. I feel like this opacity as set to be one is a little too much. So what I normally do is I just decrease it until I can tell the, um, quote unquote brownness in the in the dirt path here. So that it's not, it doesn't look like pitch black, but it's actually, you know, has a little bit of different color to it. One more thing that I would like to mention before we end this video is if we go to edit and then enter the project settings in here, right underneath the graphics tab, HDRP default settings. So just like the name suggests, right? It's a set of default settings for the HDRP, the high definition render pipeline. And in here, you can see that we have a field of shadows uh, with a different max distance set. And we also have, I believe we have a contact, oh, micro shadows and contact shadows. That's correct. So the reason why I'm showing this is because the way that the volume framework again works in Unity is that these are just the default settings that you can modify or add on top of. Now, the way it works is that if we, like we did in the sky and fog volume, if we start adding overrides, like let's say, you know, in the HDRP default settings window, we have a shadows override, right? And then in the sky and fog volume, we added one more. And now this one is overriding the default one. And that's the beauty of it. Because, and the reason I'm showing this is because I saw some comments like, you know, oh, you didn't go into the HDRP default settings. Don't you have to change that? Or don't you have to play with the settings in there? But this is the way that the volume framework works, which just makes it so much easier, right? But if you don't want to go for a, you know, specifically maybe a volume, you can also just rely on the default settings and just change them from here. Oh, and one more thing that I received a lot of questions for in my last video was um, how I added shadows or, you know, quote unquote shadows from the trees into the water. So it was just through a reflection probe. So what I do is I just go into game object, enter light, and then go ahead and add a reflection probe into the scene. And then I just center this a little bit towards the water like this. I just need to find it. There we go. There it is. And we can even set this to be real time in the inspector. And then it's just all about increasing the length of this. So I can just be like, you know, and then we can rotate this as well, just like that. And there we go. So now we have a darker water where it's actually more realistic as in terms of how it's reflecting the trees. And obviously looking from afar, it's not really that visible because it's only from this perspective. But once you get closer to the water, you can really see the shades change a little bit and you can see the reflection of the grass and the trees as well, which looks really good. And this is why I'm, I keep using this so much in my, uh, in my speed level design videos as well. So good job, people. You commented on this and I covered it in the video. Perfect. This is exactly the relationship that I want to have with you guys. <laughs> Tell me what videos to make. Tell me what I should do. Give me orders. <laughs> but yeah, I think this looks really good so far. Um, and this is pretty much all I wanted to actually cover for this video specifically. Um, I don't really think, I mean, these are all the techniques that I do uh, perform for basically, you know, getting the, as best of the shadows as I can 
in my, especially in my level design videos. And since I did see a lot of comments on it, I did wanna make a video covering this. I know this was probably a little short. I mean, I'm gonna have to see after editing the video, right? But let me know if you feel like this was too short in quote marks. Um, and I'll try to make videos longer if you want me to. But really, I tried going into as much detail as I could, um, not just to make the video longer, but to, like I said in the intro of this video, I wanted to make sure that I'm still beginner friendly, just like usual. Um, and still, you know, it is applicable for intermediate people. So I don't bore you guys to death uh, by basically teaching you the whole basics again. But yeah, let me know what you think of this format for a video. I think this was a lot of fun to cover, but obviously what really matters is what you think. So let me know in the comment section. All right, so that is pretty much it for this video. Hope you guys enjoyed this little tutorial on shadows and especially realistic shadows in Unity. It's a topic that I was feeling a little weird about making a video of because I felt like, oh, this could be such an easy thing. But then I remembered when I was getting started with the high definition render pipeline, I actually had no clue how to get these things set up because it's, and it's still such a new thing that a lot of people haven't been, you know, actually transitioning into. So I feel like maybe this could help the whole community to actually learn a few things. And hopefully it does. <laughs> yes, that is the goal of the video, to teach people something. I know it's surprising. Let me know in the comment section if you guys have any other ideas for tutorials. And also, you know, speaking of this, um, I did see a lot of people asking me to make a video on shadows and realistic shadows in my level design videos. So if you have any other topics you would like me to cover, let me know in the comments because obviously that's a very good source of feedback for videos. I mean, clearly I made this so. <laughs> I'm just basically saying, comment down below what you would like to see in the next video. Gosh, I mix everything so long. Also, if you enjoyed the video, make sure to smash like and hit subscribe for more videos. And by the way, we have a Discord server for this community of 21,000 members, I want to say. I may be a little off there, um, but over 20,000 members, that's accurate. And there's just a bunch of game developers and game designers in there. So make sure to join us by going to the link in the description. I would also like to give a huge shout out to all of our supporters on Patreon including Kupla, Realtetsverlust, I know I'm probably saying that wrong still, please teach me in the comment section how to actually say that, Samuel Rivello and the Messy Coder, thank you guys so much for all of your support on Patreon and if you are interested in seeing how you could support the channel and support the growth of this channel, uh, feel free to check out the link in the description which will take you to our Patreon page. And with that being said, ah, I failed to sync, wait. And with that being said, there we go, I'm so proud of myself. Another video has come to an end and my hair is also coming to an end. I have no idea what to do with it anymore, honestly. But yes, thank you so much for watching this video. Hope you guys enjoyed and had some fun. Um, I think it was a, you know, still a needed topic even though I had this dilemma of it, would it be too easy or would it be actually good? Um, hopefully you liked it and obviously once again let me know in the comment section and also let us know if you have any ideas for any more tutorials. And on that, I'm gonna be super active in the comment section so I'll see you guys there. Have a good one and peace out. I'm